it's totally blatantly obvious that this is a political move. Um, I mean, it was a political move from the beginning, beginning to move us from Syracuse off the coast of Sicily, where we were uh, sheltering from the storm, to Catania. Uh, to disembark the people where there is a prosecutor that is uh, known for his political agenda against sea rescue NGOs, while the prosecutor in Syracuse had already said that our captain had nothing, had done nothing wrong uh, during the mission, so uh, he wouldn't uh, seize the ship. Now they moved us to Catania to this prosecutor. Obviously, now they couldn't find anything to really seize the ship. Now they're coming up with these te technical issues that are uh, that don't make sense at all to block the ship to resolve these minor issues. But don't you have sympathy for the fact that Italy is struggling with huge numbers of migrants? <clears throat> We're talking hundreds of thousands of people who've arrived on their shores. Uh, it's, it's very difficult for the Italian government to process all these people. You're bringing these people, uh, more migrants, uh, to their soil and, and basically dumping them there, leaving the Italians to deal with this. I, I totally have sympathy for for Italy and uh, the other uh, states on the edges of Europe, that they cannot uh, be left alone with this issue. On the other side, um, so, so that is also something that Sea-Watch demands. Sea-Watch has been demanding a safe passage to Europe to, to avoid death at sea at all. Um, we have also been demanding a stop to the Dublin, Dublin regulations so that the people can move throughout Europe, that they don't have to get stuck in Italy, that they don't have to get stuck in Spain. Of course, uh, there needs to be a European solution. But on the other side, this cannot mean stopping sea rescue because there is no European solution. We have to push for a European solution and not stop sea rescue because this is a, a, a duty to every seafarer that is as old as humanity to rescue people in, in distress at sea. But nevertheless, the political reality is, is that rescue missions like yours are being stopped because of uh, political concerns like we've seen in Italy. Given the fact that there are far fewer rescue ships around, what is happening to all those migrants who are risking their lives to set off uh, to try to get to Europe? They're still going out. They're still risking their lives. And there are their lives are much more uh, at risk once there are no rescue ships anymore. I mean, we were the last uh, operative rescue ship at the moment. Um, two more ships are stuck in Spain. We are now stuck in Italy. There is no civilian rescue asset anymore in the in the uh, area. There's also no European military in the area. There's also no Italian Coast Guard in the area. The only ones that are there are the Libyans who, at the uh, who have who are paid by Europe to take these people back to Lib Libya, which Europe is not allowed to do because Europe is bound by international law. Uh, so this is, the, the, this is nothing else than human trafficking going on there when Europe pays uh, militias to pull back people to Libya into torture camps where they are sold as slaves, where they are raped, where there is uh, torture, where there is uh, kidnapping going on. Um, so this is what happens. Uh, the other option is that the people go out and they get lost at sea, and nobody ever knows that they were there. Um, this is also something we've been confronted with a lot, that people say, yeah, now that you're gone, there's uh, far less people dying. That is, that is simply not true. The, the, the death rate has been rising. The UNHCR has just published a report that says exa exactly that. And um, that also says that the criminalization of sea rescue NGOs is, plays a big role in the, in the rising death rate. And the death rate might be even higher than we already know because nobody's there to, to count the death.